What is up, everybody? It is Alex, the Boogeyman, coming at you from Title Boxing Club Pittsburgh with another Focus Point of the Week. Now, this is actually something that two people separately approached me about in the last few weeks, so I think the universe is telling me it should be our Focus Point. We are going to talk about the difference between a rear hook and an overhand punch. Rear hook, overhand. You can probably tell the difference right now. Rear hook, overhand, right? The angle, that's the biggest difference. The rear hook comes across sweeps across, clears the shelf. The overhand comes up, what I like to call a slashing, somewhat of a downward trajectory. Now, yes, you can throw the, the overhand from different angles. You can go way out there, or you can go ice pick style right over the top, like Chuck Liddell and UFC, but it must have somewhat of a downward trajectory, overhand, a looping downward trajectory, or it's just not an overhand, it's a different punch. So there's other key differences as well. You can see if I turn here, right, and I throw my rear hook, that's the range I've got. Overhand comes out a little bit further, so it can be a longer range punch. The rear hook is a shorter range punch. Then there's also dropping your weight down into the overhand. So dipping your lead shoulder, dropping your weight down, letting your weight fall and catching it. This is why I harangue you guys, when we don't bend our front knee, so when you just throw overhands like this, and your knee just stays still, you're losing balance, and you're losing power. Whereas if you drop down, bam, you can get a lot more power, a lot better balance. You're able to react to what comes next. Ooh, then there's hand position. This is something I have a hard time convincing people. Turning your wrist to a thumbs down position. And the reason why I have a hard time convincing people probably is because it's awkward. It feels very awkward and strange at first to do that. But eventually it will give you more power. Maybe not at first, because it takes time but it will give you more power, right? And the reason is because I get my elbow driving down through the punch, driving down at that angle. If I just do this, I'm losing out. Some of that impact is going past where I have no skeletal arm and no bones. I wanna make sure that elbow gets behind the punch for extra power. Now, speaking of extra power, the rear hook is a very powerful punch. It may even be the most powerful punch you throw, but I like to think of it sometimes as the Jon Snow of punches from Game of Thrones. Why? Because a lot of these coaches, they don't want to acknowledge it. They want to pretend like, you'll hear them even say crazy things like, oh, there's no such thing as a rear hook. There's no such thing. You would never throw that punch in a fight. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a coach. I'm a walrus, etc. And that's the accent that they say. I don't know why they say they're a coach and a walrus, but they do say that, right? And it's not true. You watch fights, and yes, you'll see all kinds of rear hooks. Some of them powerful knocking suckers out, not killing white walkers with that rear hook. So it absolutely does exist. It's a great tool. It's a great thing to work on. Boxing analysts, play-by-play -play guys, they're out of the conspiracy too. If someone throws a punch like this, they'll call it an overhand, no matter what. Even if there's no overhand trajectory at all. Who knows why? Whereas they'll call this a lead hook all day long. We'll never call that an overhand left. Anyway, who knows why they've got this conspiracy, but we're gonna break it up and we're gonna work this week on making sure that our rear hooks come right across, our overhands slash down, and we make them stronger and better because that is how we do it and because winter is coming.